Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the Lifeline Ministries International Television Program. I'm your host, Minister Donald Lee Johnson. As usual, it is my honor, pleasure, and privilege to be broadcasting this television program to you wherever you are viewing it today. We are here in the fine studio of Dallas Theological Seminary in Dallas, Texas, and we have a very, very special guest today, our very own Franklin Dowdy. God bless you. We call him Frankie, by the way. <laughs> Welcome, Frankie, to the program. Well, hey, Donald. I appreciate you having me. It's good to be here. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for being able to come on and to share with us today. I think you have something that's really very powerful um, to share with the community, and it's going to encourage us. And it's going to um, help us to run the race that is set before us with patience mm -hmm. as we look unto Jesus, yeah. who was the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's pray first. Yeah. Father, in the mighty and magnificent name of Jesus Christ, we truly thank you. We are grateful to you, Lord God, for all that you have done, for that which you are doing in our lives, and for that which you have promised to do. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness and how it is great and how your mercies are new every morning. So, Father, we pray that uh, you will bless this broadcast and uh, that you will be glorified, O oh God, that the church will continue to be edified. And, Lord, that even we ourselves in our personal lives and even as a community and as the church will be revived. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, as I invited you on the program, I uh, lately have been thinking about a couple of verses that I would like mm -hmm. to use as a segue yeah. into what you're going to share with us today, Frankie. And those verses are in Paul's second letter to Timothy, okay. his, his mentee, um, whom he himself called his son in the gospel. And uh, this is what those verses say. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 10 through 14 say, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, and that's what you want to underline, mm -hmm. if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. Mm -hmm. Paul's, um, some of his final words mm -hmm. uh, prior to his execution ah. uh, to his son in the gospel. But what I've been really thinking about is verse 12, which says, and just the first part, verse 12, clause A, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Mm. That sounds like a promise, Frankie. Come on. You know, if we suffer. Frankie, how would you define suffering? Yeah, I think just really broadly suffering is, um, uh, typically you look at suffering as kind of an extended period of, um, some kind of pain or difficult circumstance that's generally large and unrelenting. Yes, and the, the reality, the truth of the matter is we all suffer in some ways mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. And I think it would be fair to say that maybe some people suffer more than others. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean it's, it's hard when you're looking at something that's intangible or quantify it, but I think that it's fair to objectively look at some people and say that they've suffered more than, than a lot of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, oftentimes, um, you know, in in the seminary it's mentioned, mm -hmm. and I know it's also mentioned a lot of in, in the local churches mm -hmm. uh, here in the Dallas uh, uh, area, uh, the life of Johnny Erickson uh, Tata, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, you know, she is an epitome of suffering as a Christian, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm sure maybe some of our viewers will be familiar with her story, how she succumbed to an accident, I believe she was diving into a pool, mm -hmm. and um, she injured herself, and, you know, she's remained a paraplegic uh, for the, you know, 
or will be and has been a paraplegic for the rest of her life. But yet she's giving God the glory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, that, that's phenomenal. And I think, Frankie, sometimes, you know, as we look, um, as we stand on the periphery mm-hmm. of someone else's life and of someone else's suffering, and I think many times we think, oh, if that happened to me, how could I glorify God? I, I, I mean, mm-hmm. you, you know, even Job that we read about in the Bible, you know, when he was going through all of his suffering, even his wife said, you know, why don't you um, curse God and die? Mm-hmm. But there's something so supernatural that occurs in people's lives when they're Christians and when they are suffering. You know, God just supernaturally intervenes and lifts that person up and yeah. enables them to endure the suffering and to still honor God, love God, and to praise God. And I know, Frankie, even in your life, and I know you're younger than Johnny Erickson, um, but you have endured um, some sufferings in your life that maybe other people have not experienced and will not ever experience. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so my my life really, I think, in, in terms of my acquaintance with suffering, took a pretty big turn in my college year. So my junior year, I was diagnosed with a nerve disease that affects my face and uh, started off just kind of having some weird headaches and weird pain and what that ended up being was really I think 26 months of just being a disgusting amount of pain for uh, about 90 percent of the time I was awake every day and really uh, changes who you are as a person is suffering grows you up really quick in a short amount of time and uh, chronic pain uh, all just as much Um, and so really uh, had a tremendous impact on just my life and um, just my relationships and just really everything and I'm really thankful now it's relented a lot I mean just really only having a few hours a week of pain and not just constantly every day. But yeah, it was a pretty uh, big change in my life and kind of just as that turning point of really transitioning into being a young adult. Yes. And now, so how old were you when you were first diagnosed with your um, affliction? Yeah, I, was, I think I was 21. So it was okay. probably it was middle, of middle of my junior year of college, so I should have been wow. 21. Yeah, so just at a point in time when most people are entering into the beginnings of the prime of their lives. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm sure at the age of 21, with college almost behind you, um, you surely did not anticipate. No, not at all. Some sort of affliction that yeah, you absolutely would, uh, not. Uh, live with for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Were you a Christian when you were diagnosed with I was. your illness? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And as a Christian, um, and then you know being di- diagnosed with mm-hmm. some sort of a disease as you mentioned what was that like I mean what, what was that like for you yeah I, I think you have to uh, the hard question that really is you have to reconcile this concept of okay God's good and he's all-powerful and he loves me and he knows what he's doing but this is still real and it's still happening and uh, I've, I've prayed and it hadn't gone away yes. um, so I think I think that's just the most difficult thing you you begin to navigate and you you really consistently navigate maybe even sometimes on the other end you look back and still wonder um, is how do we reconcile God's goodness with this very real and present suffering in our lives exactly and as for Christians you know like we hear so many people outside of Christianity and they're pretty quick to um, you know be very vocal you know God is good why is this happening to Mm -hmm. me but uh, although as Christians we ask that question, but we don't have the luxury of living in that particular perspective, right? You know, because we know God is good. Mm-hmm. We know that He doesn't make any mistakes. We know what Psalm thirty-four and verse nineteen uh, uh, says, uh, as David said, "Many are the afflictions of the righteous, mm-hmm. but the Lord delivereth them out of them all." So we're held to a higher level of accountability, yeah. even in our afflictions. Yeah. Yeah, no. So, so, Frankie, how did you reconcile? How would you suggest, because we're sure that there are going to be some people that are going to be able to relate to your situation. Maybe they're suffering now. Uh, maybe they're dealing with chronic headaches. Maybe they're mm-hmm. dealing with chronic back aches. Maybe they have AIDS. Maybe they have cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say... Uh, to those individuals who are trusting and believing God and know that God is mm-hmm. good, how do we reconcile the reality of suffering and the reality of who God is and his promises? Yeah. Where is the consensus between those two extremes, mm-hmm. we might even say? Yeah. Well, I think um, really 
just walking through, we, we have to look at it. I think what is God promises? What does Jesus promise us in His Word? He's promised us, uh, when, when you look at Ephesians 2, that we're saved by grace through faith and that we can have eternal life with Him. Um, and and that, uh, that promise that if we have faith in Jesus and that, that when He rescues us that we will be with Him and we will be with Him now, we will be with Him 50 trillion years from now. Um, and so I think uh, Jesus is so uh, rightfully concerned with, with really what is going to matter uh, now, what is going to matter into infinity, um, and that we have a hope that there's going to be a day where we're not going to suffer anymore, and there's going to be a day where uh, my face isn't going to hurt anymore, and whether you're going through physical suffering or, or, any, or anything else, um, that, that also I think that God's not flippant um, with fame. Like, you know, I, I like to describe it as He's not just this, mean kid with a backwards hat and a magnifying glass. We're not just his aunt and he's burning our feelers off because he thinks it's funny. Uh, you know, but I think that there, there's times where um, Jesus will beautifully wound us so that we will draw close to the cross. And that it's not because he's cruel, he thinks it's funny, but because if he's a good dad and he is who he says he is, and he will do whatever he needs to to make sure his kids come home. And I, and I wouldn't say that I'm going to just broad stroke that's all suffering, that all suffering is so that you will be brought to your knees and, and run to Jesus. I think part of suffering is just we live in a broken world. It, this sin has entered the world, and so um, it has damaged everything. And that's just from people being sinful and doing things like just crime. Uh, that's, a, that's a result of fall. But also when sin entered the world, talk about the world became sick. And, and so like disease and brokenness, earthquakes, natural disasters, all those things, that's a, a product of living in a broken world as well. Sin has tainted the ground. Um, and so we, we see that too there, that that wasn't God's design for these things. And that's not God just um, arbitrarily putting his thumb on some people um, with that. But I, but I do think celebrate, and I want to be cautious when I say this, I'm not saying this is a a masochist or a sadist, like I don't, I don't enjoy being in pain, but there's a part of me that celebrates that I think that God will use suffering to equip us to walk well with other people. You know, I'm grateful that uh, when I meet people who, who suffered in at least a similar way as me, I'm not going to tell them I know exactly how you feel, but it, exactly. at least when, when I'm talking to them, I don't have to pat them on the head and go, man, I have no idea what that's like. I can look across to them, and I can talk, confidently tell them that God's still good. I, I mean, I mean it's so, so, so very true, and I know that that's a part of your story, and that's, you know, why I wanted you to come on and you know, to it. talk to the community about it. You know, a couple of things come to my mind. Uh, you talk about the fallen world in which we live, mm -hmm. and that's a reality. And uh, I think that's something that people who are not saved, who are not Christians, just clearly don't understand. But something happened. You know, sin originated with Satan. It mm -hmm. entered the world through Adam and Eve. And the only remedy for sin mm -hmm. is Jesus Christ yeah. and his sacrificial life, death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. So when we become a Christian, we all... Um, have the benefit of, of experiencing that new life in Christ, even with the suffering, with the promise of eternal life. So what comes to my mind, Frankie, is Jesus said in this world, now the world was made by Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, and the world knew him not. He came into the world and uh, the world uh, knew him not, but as mm -hmm. many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Yeah. But Jesus himself said in this world, you will have tribulations mm -hmm. but be of good cheer I have overcome yeah. the world and then the other scripture that comes to my mind is which we discussed in our spiritual formation group um, as recent as yesterday when mm -hmm. we were listening to one of our fellow brothers testimony and the Apostle Paul talks about it in 2nd Corinthians chapter yeah. 1 and I'm gonna turn there because every time I go through a trial you know this scripture just comes to life for me and 2nd Corinthians uh, chapter 1, and I'll read verses 3 and 4. Cool. And it says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, mm. who comforts us in all our tribulation, that purpose clause, right, mm -hmm. that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves mm -hmm. are comforted of God. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you just so 
uh, nicely and profoundly communicated that when you're when you're meeting someone or you know someone that is suffering, right? Mm -hmm. And and pretty, I think this could be on, on just about any level. You can look at that person, you know, not maybe reading something or not, you know, not referring to something that someone has told you, but you can look at that person square in the eyes, you know, face to face, and you can say, you know what, God is good, mm -hmm. you know, even in our sufferings. Yeah. And, and that's healing for people, mm -hmm. you know, to, because when we're going through our trials and our tribulations, sometimes we wonder, where is the Lord? Is mm -hmm. God good? You know, yeah. well, why has this happened to me? You know, Job had those same yeah, questions. Yeah, Job, David, yeah, they had those they questions. They all had those questions, you know. And, and, then, and then at the end of Job, you know, Job's trial, which I'm told by some uh, Bible teachers that it was for about, um, I don't know, I was going to say a year, but I'm not sure if it was a year. Uh, it's probably there someplace. But at the end of his trial and his tribulation, you know, God revealed God to Job, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I was thinking also, when we're going through our sufferings, oftentimes it is then clarified who God is. Mm -hmm. And in this world, he's not promised uh, the absence of suffering and the absence of pain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we know that there's a large percentage of the world that even lives in poverty, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. Um, but what he has promised, promised us in this life is salvation, being rescued and being delivered and being freed from sin mm -hmm. and then eternal life in the life yeah. to come. Come on. So I, I think I think that's just so beautiful and there's just as you're as you've said, there's a beauty in suffering. Yeah, I, th I think there's a way that, that we can suffer well and that doesn't mean you suffer pretty. Um, and, and it's really and, and I'll say this that I'm not I'm not confident to say that I, I take this as a full theological statement but okay. I will say generally speaking I think when you read the scriptures you see that God really for the most part doesn't let people spit in his face but it gives us a space to beat on his chest Amen. and and, uh, and I'm <laughs> thankful for that I'm thankful yes, that, that David yes. in the Psalms has a space to be honest with oh, God, God where he can God. say where are you? It doesn't feel like you're here. Yeah. And that God gives us the same space to just be honest. He knows where we're at anyway, so I'm thankful that He gives me the space to wrestle with Him well. Um, and I think that's a part of, of suffering well. And just, yes. I, I think as, as Christians we do have a, even if it seems unfair, I think, I think we do have a responsibility in suffering to, to still demonstrate that we have a higher hope. Amen. Um, and I don't do that well all the time, so I, I, I won't champion myself as someone who's figured that out. Um, but I do think that, that if we really believe that Jesus is precious and that He gives us life that's going to last forever, and He is yes. not that our suffering is any less, but that He is, is greater, and I think we, we have an obligation to demonstrate that in the midst of whatever we're going through that we still treasure Jesus and we have a hope in Him. Amen. Uh, and I haven't, I haven't cre quite figured out, Donald, how to, to walk that well <laughs> yet. I'm still in progress on that. Yeah. But what, yeah, I, I, what I want to be careful to do is, is, is uh, what I don't want to say is that we need to minimize our suffering. We just need to get over it because Amen. God's good or that, or that God just Amen. wants you to, to get over it. Yeah, um, but so I, to act like it doesn't exist and it's not a part of who we are as a Christian, yeah. which is quite the contrary. Or, or that, that God's only goodness in our suffering is that we're in the pit that He swoops in and He jumps in there and rescues yes. us and scoops yes. us out. But I think sometimes you experience the goodness of Jesus in suffering is that we're in the pit and He just comes and crawls down in there and lays down with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what Paul alluded to even in the same uh, letter, Second Corinthians. He said he had become a fool, you know, mm -hmm. in glorying in his, in his sufferings, you know, because when he was weak, he said then he was strong. Come on. Now God's grace is sufficient for yeah. us. And, you know, you exemplify that in all of oh, your I words and encouragement, it. you know, to the people. And I am just so profoundly inspired to see you and your beautiful wife. Roselle, mm -hmm. you know, serving the Lord, and you know, you're in, you're almost finished with your studies in Dallas. The almost, Seminary. man. So my my Amen. beautiful wife is graduating in December, and Lord Praise willing, God. I'll be graduating May of 2019. Praise the Lord. Praise so. the Lord. And not only that, you and Roselle, your wife, are getting ready to go on an awesome mission trip to Portugal. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we, we work for Crew or, or Campus Crusade uh, for Christ. Uh, wow. We work 
uh, primarily in the Dallas area with college students at Southern Methodist University and the University of Texas at Dallas and uh, just getting to share the gospel with students and train them in the faith, disciple them well, and then send them out to the world. And part of that is um, getting to partner with uh, crew locations in other countries. And so we have the opportunity to go to Portugal this summer and uh, really come alongside the staff there and uh, serve these Portuguese college students well and show them that uh, the, the Great Commission means that we go. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And you're going to be serving, you and Rosella are going to be serving in a country that is like 0.1% evangelical? So yeah, I mean, that that's probably the rough statistics. There's a lot of people who would identify as, as culturally Catholic, similar how there's a lot of people who would identify as ethnically Jewish maybe, but wouldn't claim any um, faith out absolutely. of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Absolutely, and in the conversation we were having before we started the program, you were saying that a lot of the um, uh, people there in Portugal, they proclaim to be Catholic, but they um, admittedly uh, voice that they don't believe in the Bible. Right, and there and there's not a disconnect for them because because for them it, it's mm-hmm. culture. Their their parents are Catholic, yeah. their grandparents are Catholic. Those yeah, yeah, yeah. those grandparents grandparents are Catholic. So it's it's definitely ingrained in them. But but in another way, I think just living in a post, a modern post Catholic culture yeah, in cool. Portugal, um, the faith part just not as important to most people in daily life. And, and, and it's amazing, and it's amazing, which brings to my mind uh, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, mm-hmm. you know, came to Jesus by night, and uh, you know he said. Jesus, we know that you're a teacher that has come from God because nobody can do the miracles that you do except God be with them. And Jesus didn't even entertain all of the flattery, but he simply said, marvel not, I said unto you, you must be born again. So I'm sure your ministry is going to be really, really effective. And I pray that you'll really reach the hearts and the souls and the mind of the young people that will be entrusted to your ministerial care. Well, we and appreciate you. Yeah, God bless you. We're going to bring this program to a close. But before we do, Frankie, um, uh, our, our theme tonight is um, suffering and still loving Jesus. Um, what would you say to the community? And we're going to even ask you to pray for them uh, yeah. before we conclude our program. What yeah. Would, what would you say? You can look at look at the camera for us, and let's let's have yeah. some dialogue with with our people. Well, I, I would say just anybody who who is suffering or who has suffered. Um, Early, because at some point you're you're going to suffer. Um, that, that God sees your pain, and, and that God is gracious and kind and will weep with you. Um, and that if you're frustrated with God or if you're angry, uh, talk to Him about it. That you have the space to to be honest with God. Um, and that it's hard, and I'm sorry. And there's really it, it's not always fun to have people try and make you feel better. And so I don't want to just try and tell you to get over it or tell you that it's automatically going to get better. But I do want to tell you that God sees you and he loves you. And that he is able to do exceeding Come on. abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Yeah. Frankie, thank you so much for taking your time. Hey, you thanks for having me. Sell. Amen. Thank you so much. This has been a blessing and something that we wanted to talk about. And uh, we wanted to... Uh, community to hear your story. I appreciate it. So we really thank everybody for tuning in and spread the word about our YouTube channel, Lifeline Ministries International. I'm your host, Minister Donald Johnson, and now abides faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. God bless you.